Today I'm going to be reviewing the Razer Black Widow Lite keyboard. It's been my daily driver for about a year now uh, for everything from spreadsheets to email to some light gaming. Let's get into it. I'm not going to get too technical into the specs themselves, but I would like to point out a few key features. I'll post the main features on the video. Uh, if you're interested, go ahead and pause it and check them out. It's got white LED backlighting, which is adjustable both in the Razer Synapse 3.0 software and from the keyboard itself. While it doesn't have dedicated media keys, you can use the function keys to control volume and playback. This has been a key feature for me while I'm working since I'm often listening to music in the background on Chrome. You can pause your music quickly without having to pull up the tab or program that's playing the music. It comes with O-rings and a key puller and a braided detachable cable. It has feet to prop up the keyboard a little bit, although they don't prop it up very much. Let's talk about switches. This keyboard comes standard with razor orange switches, which are comparable to other quiet tactile switches such as Cherry MX Browns. I happen to have an Apex 7 with Browns and those switches certainly sound much cheaper than these. I also like the feel of these while I'm typing. I'm not really sure how to express why I like them better other than to say that I feel like I'm always sure of it when I've registered a keystroke. Next up, let's talk about some pros. You have durable 80 million keystroke rated switches, removable braided cable. The rubber feet on this are just great. I've had zero issues with it moving while I'm typing or gaming. And adjustable backlighting is super clear in the dark. So let's talk about some cons. The marketing is a little bit misleading. Um, the switches are quieter than many of the other mechanical keyboards that I've used, but by no means are they silent. Uh, it's also not a strict TKL layout, so it may be difficult to find supported third-party keycaps. Razer doesn't mention this at all on the sales page, but it's worth noting if you'd like to switch out the keycaps here. Uh, I learned about this from a fantastic channel called Top Spec, who breaks this down way better than I ever could. Uh, I've linked them in the description, so go ahead and check them out if you like tech reviews. Next up, there's no included wrist rests, so you can buy one from Razer for $20 extra if you'd like. While the O-rings are included, they're not pre-installed. This might seem like a small deal, but it is a bit tedious and will likely take you around 30 minutes of working through it. I personally prefer having them on my keyboard. Uh, it's a bit quieter and the key presses are just more satisfying. Next up, let's talk about the price. This keyboard retails for $89.99 directly from Razer. It's about $88 from Amazon right now, but you can find it cheaper from places like eBay. I'd say if you can get it for $65 or less, it's a no brainer. This keyboard is great for someone who wants a world-class typing experience, but doesn't care so much about bells and whistles such as dedicated media keys or onboard macros. If you like Cherry MX Browns, I think you'll really like the Razer Orange Switches. This is a fantastic keyboard for someone who's looking for a keyboard that'll last a long time. Office workers who want to forego the gamer look without sacrificing build quality would also really appreciate this keyboard. It's not for someone who requires a silent typing experience, contrary to Razer's marketing department. Um, so if you're a gamer who wants to play or work while your significant other sleeps in the same room, it still may not be the right solution for you since it's likely loud enough to bother them. Someone who needs to use macros on Mac computers will run into roadblocks as well since Razer's Synapse 3.0 software is only compatible with Windows. It's also not for someone who needs a numpad. If you rely on a numpad to get your job done, you may want to check out the Razer ProType. It's also not for a super hardcore gamer or someone who needs RGB. I've used it for gaming before, but I far and away prefer my Apex 7 when it comes to gaming. There you have it, the Razer Black Widow Lite. Uh, it's a fantastic keyboard that um, I really like. I've used it as my daily driver for about a year and there's a great reason for it. 
So if you're in the market for a keyboard and you want just a really great typing experience and not much else, this I feel like will take care of your needs pretty well. Uh, if you like tech reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm John Lochran, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.